Now we're going to take a look at the toolbar and dig in deeper into what each tool does. To get started, let's just do a general overview of the toolbar and the different parts of it. This first section of tools that we will look at are referred to as the selection tools. So it's helpful to when you're looking for tools to think, okay, that's something I select with, I know it'll be in this top section. The next section, and you can see there's these bars dividing each area of the toolbar, are the drawing and typing tools. So think of those as kind of content creation. The set of tools right below that are the transformation tools. So when we are scaling, transforming, basically changing objects, those are the tools we would use. Below that is our navigation tools. So these are tools that help us kind of navigate our document, get through it in different ways, etc. Let's go ahead and get started with our selection tools. The first tool, and notice when I mouse over each tool, I get a tool tip. Uh, that's helpful as you're learning um, about InDesign. It also shows you the keyboard shortcut you can use to access that tool. So the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. The selection tool allows you to select objects, move them around, you can resize objects, whether that be text boxes or images. If you combine the selection tool with the shift and command, you can scale a photo proportionally. And we'll look at that more when we talk about images. And you can move objects around to different locations. The direct selection tool is A, and I think it's helpful to know I won't always give you the keyboard shortcut for tools, but the selection tool and the direct selection tool are tools that you see throughout Adobe's programs, and at the very least one of the keyboard shortcuts you should remember should be the V for the selection tool, because you can use that in Premiere, in Illustrator, um, and that's one thing you're going to learn. As soon as you weren't learn one Adobe program, a lot of the skills you learn can transfer easily to other programs. So on to the direct selection tool. If you select a fill, it can work like the selection tool in that you can move objects around. But where it differs is when you dial down closer. So let's take a look at this object specifically. I'm going to zoom in so we can see that a little bit closer. And I'm actually going to come over here and I'm going to select this end point. And notice when I selected that end point, it went from white to blue. Let's do that up here. And so that helpful tool tip, and you notice I'm getting a little circle, that indicates I'm selecting an anchor point. And when I do that, I can stretch and manipulate that point. So I can make changes to that. I can also select the path or the line between two anchor points. And notice this time I get that little line as a visual cue that that's what I have. The next tool is our pages tool and the pages tool is a very specific tool allowing us to kind of work with our pages in different ways. And to use it you kind of need to set a few things up. So I'm going to go over to my pages panel and I'm actually going to make sure that I don't have allow document pages to shuffle. I'll just make sure that's unchecked. Then with my pages tool I'm going to select page 2 and I'm going to slide it up there and see how I'm getting that bar. When I let go 
I have effectively moved page 2 over here and kind of made this a spread. Now, still on my page tool with this selected, uh, just page 1, not the entire spread, um, I am going to change what type of page this is and I'm going to switch it to a business card. Now, why would I want a business card next to a full page spread? Well, say that I'm designing some logos and some things for businesses and I kind of like the idea of having the business card and then the letterhead right next to each other. That would be a good use for it. Um, you might have times when you're doing promotional work for brand strategies where you need a couple of different sizes of documents. Working with the page tool allows you to do that. Our next tool is the gap tool. And what the gap tool does is allows you to move objects but keeps the space between them the same. So you can see as I'm resizing these photos down here, the space between them stays consistent. This would work between object and text, image and text, as well as between two images as you've seen down here. So it just holds the space consistent rather than the size of the object. Our next tool is the content collector tool. And there are a lot of applications for this tool. So this is a very, very brief get you started overview. The content collector tool allows you to access content and reapply it to other pages. So let's see how this works. I am going to, with my content collector on, select these three image or four images. Notice they are now in my content bin and I have a number four next to them. I also have the content placer accessible before it was grayed out. And I am going to add page down here. And I'm going to select my content placer. Now I can access these items. And that gives me some options for how I'm going to place these. Do I want to place and remove from the conveyor here? Do I want to place them and keep them in the conveyor? Or do I want to place, keep in the conveyor and load the next? That's the option I'm going to choose here. And notice I clicked once and they placed and I have it loaded again. So how does that help us? Well, if I wanted these images to appear on another page as well, that would be the way to do it. Or if perhaps I just like a design that I put together and I want to use that on another page in my spread for consistency, Content Conveyor allows me to do that. Um, it's also really good for things like logos. Let's go ahead and move on to our drawing and typing tools. Type tool with a T allows us to access content. We can create text boxes. Great tip for you if you control click you can fill with placeholder text. That's good as you're kind of building your design. You don't really have a lot of content yet. I used Command A to select my text. And up here I can change the font, the size, the letting, all sorts of different font editing options. And we'll look at this deeper in our type unit. Here are a lot of our paragraphing options. So do I want it centered, bullet points, indent the first line. Um, so all of those features are there. One thing that I find um, helpful with the type tool is sometimes you know I get into the type tool and then I want to move something. If you hit the command key, you will temporarily access the type tool and move something, go back to typing. Below that is the line tool. When you draw a line segment, 
If you want to keep it perfectly straight, hold the Shift key down. Up here you have a series of options, so you can change the size of your line. Your line doesn't need a fill, it in fact just has a stroke on it, which is this option. Um, every object you have has both a fill and a stroke, so it's important to kind of look at either or. You can choose different types of lines, and of course increase the size, all with your line segment tool. Below that is your pen tool, and pen tools are kind of a world unto their own. Um, we won't get super into those, but pen tools allow you to create bezier curves. And like with everything, they have a fill and a stroke. So if you just want those to have a stroke, it's best to turn your fill off. Again, you can see very similar to this object, we have points and paths between the points, and these little items are called direction handles. Working with the pen tool is something that we will cover in depth in Illustrator later. Right below that, and notice both the pen tool and this tool have little black arrows. When you see those little black arrows, there's more tools below that. Let's take a look at the pencil tool to begin with in this tool set. Pencil tool allows you to create pencil paths. We'll see how good I did there with that one. Not too bad. And laying down both points and paths, very similar to the pen tool. You also have a smooth tool. Smooth tool is a great one to go through and kind of clean up any extra uh, points that aren't needed in a path. Kind of cleans that up for you, smooths it out. Below that is the erase tool, so if you want to go through and erase part of a path, you can do that. Below that are the rectangle and the rectangle frame tool. Now these might look very similar, but they're actually for two different purposes. So if you want to place a photo, you should use a rectangle frame tool. You can draw that out. Notice you have other frame options below it. An important note for these frames is this frame actually does not exist. This is a non-printing guide for you. So if I actually print previewed by hitting W, that disappears. So if you're doing a mock-up and you want someone to know, hey, there's going to be a photo there, go ahead and either do you know a light fill on it or preferably establish what your stroke is going to look like if you plan on having one for that image so that they can actually see it on a print preview. The rectangle tools below that are really for shape drawing. So if you were doing a sidebar and wanted to have a gray box behind it, that is the tool you would use for that application. Um, notice if you have a rectangle tool selected and you click down once, you can actually set a specific size of either the rectangle or the rectangle frame. Since we have pikas set up as our units, this is in pikas, but you don't have to use that. I'm just going to type 3 inches by 3 inches. It'll convert it and there's my 3 inch by 3 inch rectangle frame. So you can kind of work either way. Scissor tool will cut on a path and allow you to break that apart. You can then go in with your direct selection tool and make edits to that. So similar, um, kind of working with the direct selection tool with that, thinking about points and paths. Free transform will let you work with an object, scaling it, rotating it. Below that are our gradient tools.
tools. To kind of get started with the gradient tool, we want to set up a few things first. So let's say this little box down here is going to become a gradient for us. Let's delete these two things. And so this box is what we'll look at. So to set up my gradient, I actually need to open a panel for my gradient. And it's under color and gradient. So first you establish the type of gradient. And let's just say we're going to do a linear. And then you can set your colors. You can draw, drag and drop, whatever colors you want over there. What this tool does is not create this gradient. This is creating the gradient. This draws the gradient on the shape. So you can decide where that gradient is placed and how it looks. Gradient Feather tool works to provide a gradient but with transparency to it. So you can kind of see down into an object. Notes tool is a good way to communicate um, if you are working with a couple of different people on page design, on layout, you need to kind of alert them to a problem you might have. Click down, you'll get a little icon there. Make a note. You can close this. And so life goes on, this page moves around, the next person can come in, click the note tool, access that note by clicking on it, resolve it, and delete it. So it's a good way to communicate either to leave a note for yourself or to leave a note for other folks. Eyedropper tool allows you to color pick items. So let's color pick this green. And ta-da, now we have green. We can also, and you kind of need to deselect the eyedropper, select your text, and then you can apply that font later. So it, use, it can be used for both picking a font and picking colors and applying it to different objects. Your hand tool allows you to kind of move your page around and navigate. Um, the space bar also does the same thing, so if you're in another tool, you can temporarily access the hand tool by hitting space bar. Zoom tool allows you to zoom in. You can use it like a marquee. I just use command zero to fit that back on page. Or you can click down repeatedly, kind of dial down that way. As I mentioned before, you have fill and stroke down here. I don't find these accessible, so if I'm changing my fill and stroke, whether it be for an object or text, I typically go up here or in my swatches panel to do those. You can see we have our most recently applied colors there. And this last option allows us to change our view. So if we want to preview it as it would print, or if we went to preview it with the bleeds, we didn't set up bleeds on this. You can also use the W key to access that. And you can also use the view menu. And so that is your quick overview of your toolbar.